The term club servant, like legendary or world class, seemed to be overused nowadays. And whilst few would say he was world class even at his peak, he was certainly a club servant for United and is definitely a legend. A few players would sacrifice their position, role and even shirt number as they, over time, fulfilled different purposes at their club let alone rise to the challenge of doing everything asked of him and more. Whether it be in big games, having scored in three cup finals for us, or helping drag the team over the line in title run-ins. Never one for the limelight, nor someone who'll have the star quality of a best Cantona or Ronaldo, Brian McClare still contributed to 14 trophy wins, and more importantly was a key member of Fergie's transitional side, from a club desperately grasping the Merseyside outfit shirt tails to becoming the most successful English club of all time. Let's raise some Jaffa cakes and chocolate eclairs to the sublime Scot, Brian McClare. Brian John McClare was born on the 8th of December 1963 in Bells Hill, Lanarkshire, the oldest of four children. Despite being born in Bells Hill, he was brought up in Airdrie and was a supporter of Airdrieonians growing up. Unlike most footballers, Brian was particularly academic and read mathematics at the University of Glasgow. He combined his studies with a career in the game he loved after signing for Motherwell in 1981, following an unsuccessful stint with the Aston Villa youth setup. McClare started out as a midfielder, but his manager Jock Wallace shrewdly noticed the youngster's keen eye for goal and so converted him to become a striker. It turned out to be a good decision as McClare went on to score 15 league goals over the next two campaigns. In the May, Celtic manager Billy McNeil signed the youngster up for the boys to the tune of £100,000, but soon McNeil moved south of the border and so McClare was under David Hay who had just been the assistant manager of Motherwell. This didn't phase the young Chockey, given this imaginative nickname as his surname rhymed with Chocolate Eclair. By the end of the first season, he had 32 goals. Missing out on the 85 Scottish Cup final lineup, never won for convention, McClare came on sporting the number 13 shirt. With his side a goal down with just 25 minutes to play, he helped turn the day around into a winning one as Celtic ran out 2 1 winners. The following year, Chockey helped himself to a last gasp Scottish Championship winners medal. The 86 87 season was far less fruitful though, as Celtic finished their campaign empty handed. However, McClare was so prolific he won the Scottish Players Player of the Year and the Football Writers Award for his 41 goals in the campaign. By the end of his Celtic career, he'd scored 126 goals in 204 games. Meanwhile, in Manchester, Alex Ferguson had become United manager in November 1986. After he'd seen what McClare could do as a member of Celtic's matchday lineup as manager of Aberdeen prior to the Old Trafford job, he'd had his eye on the skilled marksman. With contract renewal talks at Celtic stalling in the summer of 1987, Fergie snagged the Lanarkshire boy for 850,000 quid, arguably pound for pound one of the best signings of the elite manager's career and just the second acquisition of his reign. It's often forgotten, but Brian McClare was a superb marksman with a wide range of skills, shooting, heading, poaching, passing and providing assists. The Scot was blessed with great movement and positioning, with that sixth sense that great forwards have of knowing where the ball is going to end up in the box. McClare was hard working and when going for the ball, he wasn't a Robson, Keane, Ince or even Hughes, but you would never see him shirk a challenge either. A team player, you would always see him pick the ball out the back of the net after United scored, so they could go at their opponents again, especially if they'd just equalised or were still down in the game. He had the determination and mentality of a winner. You could easily not notice him on the pitch over the 90 minutes, apart from the fact that he'd scored a brace. But some players can be effective without being the centre of attention. That was Brian McClare in United Colours. He had his critics that said he couldn't do this or couldn't do that, but more than satisfied the most demanding manager of that or any era for more than a decade. The Scotsman's impact at Old Trafford was almost immediate, scoring in his third game a 2-0 win versus Watford, and famously becoming the first player since George Best to hit 20-plus league goals in a season for United. He hit the back of the net 24 times in the Old First Division that year, and netted himself a total of 31 in all competitions as United came runners-up. This earned him the accolade of becoming United's Player of the Year, a feat he'd repeat in the 91-92 season. However, it was a period of transition for the club, as new quality signings like Bruce, Sharps, Phelan, Ware, Bintz, Pallister and Wallace were still trying to bed down and find their feet, as the remnants of the old regime were steadily swept away. Chockey would get 16 for the 88-89 season, and just 8 a year later, although that 89-90 campaign was pivotal for the future of the club, as United won the FA Cup. McClare's winners in the 5th round versus Newcastle, the quarter-final at Sheffield United and his equaliser in the semi-final replay against Oldham were crucial in that run. After that success things changed, galvanised by the cup when United steadily improved and with new recruits over the next two years to the calibre of Schmeichel, Irwin, Parker and Kinchelskis, along with some talented youth graduates like Ryan Giggs, trophies started to come thick and fast. Brian McClare was one of the driving forces of that success. After sharing the charity shield with Liverpool, United won the Cup Winners' Cup the following season, with McClare grabbing four goals in Europe along the way, contained within a tally of 21 for that season. 
The following campaign saw McClare score two cup final winners. Firstly in November 91 against Red Star Belgrade in the Super Cup. The other the winner against Forrest in the League Cup final where he picked up the Man of the Match award. Brian had hit the back of the net 25 times that season, 18 of which were league goals. Things changed for Brian McClare for the following campaign. While still one of Fergie's most trusted players, it was felt that more firepower was needed to take pressure off him and Mark Hughes up front after the side's goals had dried up in the run-in of the title loss the year before. Dion Dublin arrived for a million quid, but a long-term injury to him led to the more impactful signing of Eric Cantona. The Hughes-Cantona partnership left Chucky out in the cold somewhat, or at least in terms of a forward position, dropping back into his original midfield role alongside Paul Ince. The Scotsman's tenacity and hard work was an understated key aspect of the side's success that year. McClare played every game of that inaugural Premier League winning season. Considering his longevity, the free scoring he displayed at Celtic and the unbridled success he found with United later in his career, you'd think that Brian McClare would have earned more than 30 caps for his native Scotland. After making his debut in November 86 against Luxembourg in a Euros 88 qualifier, McClare was a squad regular for the next six years. However, despite playing in five games leading up to the 1990 World Cup, he was strangely left out the final 22. Unenviously, it took Brian a while, six years, to break his international goal-scoring duck, finally getting on the score sheet in a 3-0 win over the Commonwealth of Independent States in the Euros. His only other goal came in his final game, a 3-1 home win at Pitodri in June 93. It looks like Chockey thankfully reserved his best form for United. With Roy Keane's recruitment coming at the same time as the Scotsman's last game for his country, it appeared to be an ominous sign for things to come for him, although he was assigned to his familiar number 9 shirt when squad numbers were introduced in the summer of 93. However, that wasn't to be the case, and for the next couple of seasons he was constantly called upon by the boss, playing an average of 46 games in this time, as well as scoring a sub in the 4-0 FA Cup final win over Chelsea in 94. With the arrival of elite goalscorer Andy Cole, Chockey eventually gave up his number 9 shirt in the 96-97 season, or was made to as Coley was struggling for confidence and the boss felt that psychologically getting the number 9 shirt would help him. He was spot on. When asked on the phone by Fergie which number he'd like instead, McClare, with his wicked sense of humour, stated that he asked for number 69. After the boss called him a dirty so-and-so, Chucky was asked for an alternative. He chose number 13. The manager slammed down the phone. In fact, that number 13 was the same as the one he wore in the Scottish Cup final all those years ago with Celtic, and what makes up his Twitter handle today at Brian McClare 13. Even in his final few years at the club, Chucky was still averaging a solid 20 plus games a season into his early to mid 30s. The goals may have dried up a bit, but it was integral in the midfield. All this graft earned him a further two league titles and the same number of charity shields. McClare's last game came in a 3 0 win over Leeds in May 1998, after which he came full circle and moved back to Motherwell where it all began on a free. And funnily enough, he played 13 games for the Steel Men before retiring age 34. He then became Brian Kidd's number two at Blackburn, but they were unable to prevent the side dropping out of the Premier League. McClare became a youth coach at Old Trafford soon after this, and then in 2001 was made reserve team manager, winning their league. He was put in charge of the under 19s and won the FA Youth Cup in 2003. At the start of the 2006 7 season, he became United. His youth academy director. He held the post until 2015 when he became Scotland's national performance director. Brian left that position in July 2016. Nowadays, Brian, sporting a long, unkempt beard and moustache, has a cult social media following and attends a lot of United-centric events around the country. He also has a podcast, which is well worth a listen. I'll post the links in the description. So that was Brian McClare, a great United servant in the truest sense of the word. Selflessly played wherever he was told with 11 years service. A big game player, his goals and assists in crucial games were just as important as those scored by his teammates who occupied, by default, more column inches. So what's your favourite Brian McClare moment and was there anything I missed? Please comment below and if you can, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for your support.